It's April 20th here in Denver, Colorado, and I'm in my little tent here for my morale patch. So I just lifted up this tarp. I've been hand watering it for maybe three weeks now, and I'm about to install some uh, spray nozzles on the interior here so I can create a nice mist to cover all of this uh, mycelium and canidia that are starting to pop up. So if you look really closely, there's quite a bit of mycelium coming out of the surface. So it's definitely pretty healthy. Um, it feels moist to the touch. And then if you squish these little uh, pieces of mycelium, it's almost like, like a powdery soft mycelium. So that is the canidia, which is an asexual form of reproduction. So once I start to really bring up the moisture content of this soil, my hopes are that the water table will rise and it will trigger all of the sclerotia to start pinning. The ground temperatures are right above 50. So this is the time to uh, give it everything I have and hopefully we get some fruits. And you can see the mycelium here coming out from the perimeter of these bags. Alright guys, so I've got these little three mil misters and I'm just going to line them up right down the middle. Let's uh, give her a go. All right, everyone. So it's misting really well in there. It's creating like fine little mist, so it shouldn't affect the pins. I'm going to put this on a timer three times a day for 10 minutes um, and see how that goes. I'm aiming for about 60% uh, moisture content in the soil and I'll keep an eye on this. Hopefully we see some pins now that the weather warmed up. Uh, but yeah, I'll keep you updated. All right guys, so it's mid-May and it's morel season but we did not see any fruits. You can see there's a lot of nice mycelium and lots of life happening, but no fruits. So I'm still going to utilize this hoop house for my uh, summer garden and I'm going to use it as a third or fourth flush area for my fruiting blocks and I'm gonna go back to the drawing board. I think that maybe the pH was off. It could have been too dry even though I've had these misters running constantly. It was pretty windy um, but yeah I don't know what happened and also I think that um, this year I'm going to be using more grain spawn instead of just the sawdust blocks, but it's a short window and 
this is my fourth attempt now and I think that it's going to eat, get even better until we get some fruit so um, yeah but I did find some morel mushrooms I'm working with some um, some of our foragers right now and I've got some Conica and Morcella importuna that I'm going to be cloning to add a couple more strains to the library. All right, everyone. So as disappointing as it was that we did not see any fruits this spring, um, the foragers that we worked with did find a couple different species of morel. So this is a burn morel. It's a Morcella conica. And you can see how dark these are. They have longer striations than the other morels. Um, these do require a burn period like a forest fire um, for them to fruit so they're present in nature we have them in Colorado here and they often appear the year after a forest fire or the second year after at the perimeter of the fire and the thought is that it helps introduce wildlife back into the ecosystem it helps to break down that burned matter and turn it into viable soil so we have this Morcella conica, a few um, of these mushrooms, and then we also have the uh, regular morel or the um, Morcella importuna here. So a couple different specimens. These ones get much larger. They're a beige color and they grow with deciduous trees, like especially cottonwood trees. Um, so we have a blonde morel, another Morcella importuna, and a conica in my library, but I'm going to clone these and then also do a bunch of spore prints and try to increase the variability of the morels that I'm going to be growing. So if you check out my video with the Danish morel project, it took those brothers 30 years to go through 150 or so different phenotypes of Morcella to uh, find the ones that they can cultivate indoors. So I think that having more and more variety over the years is going to be another avenue that leads to success. So I'll do a bunch of spore prints. I'm going to post these cultures on Etsy as soon as I clean them up and get them into a liquid culture. I'm also going to post Morel spore prints as soon as this is out to help spread the var variety across this community. I think that we can condense 30 years of research into only a few years or even less than that if we're spreading out all of the different phenotypes. Someone out there should be able to find a viable culture in a relatively quick amount of time. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to continue to do my research. I'll keep posting updates. Maybe this, uh, this fall, I'm going to change my approach with the spawn for the morels. So I'm going to do the uh, five pound grain bags instead of the sawdust like I did last year. And then I'm going to adjust for the pH as well. And someone did comment about having treated water as my sprayers. So there is some chlorination in, in the city water here in Denver and maybe by going to my new property and trying the well water, which is untreated Rocky Mountain water, that might lead to success as well. Um, these are all different things that I have to weed out year after year in order to figure out the best procedure for growing these mushrooms. Okay, I'm gonna put on some gloves, clone these, and then I'll lay out a bunch of morel mushrooms on glass slides so I can take spore prints and the idea is that I'll lay a mushroom on a slide and then I'll lay slides around it so that there will be one concentrated slide but it might have more debris on it and then the ones on the perimeter will have less spores but they should be cleaner because they're not touching the mushroom. 
All right, guys. Okay, I'm going to do the Marcella Conica on these orange plates and the Natural Morels on the green plates. Going to do the natural morel. Trying to take that bright white region right there. Okay guys, we've got this beautiful basket of the natural morels that I'm going to place on top of these glass slides. So I'm going to get the spore prints on these slides and I'm just going to create a layer of glass slides to rest these morels on. And the idea is that if I place one of these mushrooms in the middle, then the two slides on either side should have less bacteria and more spores. And then this slide directly underneath will be more concentrated. And I've got a few of the burn morels over here that I'm gonna do the same thing.
All right, everyone, I hope you enjoy the 2022 Morel project update. I will release these spore prints and I'll have liquid cultures of all of our Morel strains on our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. And I will continue to do my due diligence to improve my process of morale cultivation until we get some fruits. So I hope you guys enjoy these videos. Leave a comment below if you have any suggestions or ideas of things that we could do to improve our process. I'm gonna be doing more videos in the fall. As soon as the weather turns around over the summer, I've got some plans for um, our backyard here. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of Kingstropharia, the uh, Bluefoot mushrooms, and a bunch of different agaricus mushrooms to try to incorporate natural mushrooms in the garden. Um, stay tuned for those projects. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy our content. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. And until next time, much love. <laughs>